But what about the whole Oscar so white thing? I think black people can join the Oscars. You got to call your white friend, because that's all that's in it, and say, I want to be a member. I'm Tyler Perry. I recommend you. Who ain't, who ain't going to recommend Tyler Perry? Then you'll have a vote. I'm not worried about the Oscars. I'm not watching it out of respect for those who, you know, you could have gave a nod to it. I'm doing a black Oscars for the fun of it, spoof. What you're doing? Oh, it's just a huge black Oscars, all deaf digital. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay. Tony Rock is hosting it. Okay. I think we got a lot of jokes the Academy passed on that were too racy. <laughs> Okay. And Tony Rock is hosting the Black Oscars. You like that? Good. Chris no, Rock is doing the, the Oscars, and Tony Rock yeah, is doing Tony the Black shit Oscars. On him. Okay. And I love uh, Chris is my man, but I, Tony got shit on him. But so I'm announcing now, Tony Rock hosting Black Oscars, and he's got shit on Chris because he get all the jokes Chris couldn't actually use. On top of the jokes he writes himself. Okay. That's funny, right? I think that's funny. Pretty funny. Anyway, so people should get a nod. I don't know. They, I mean, you can give uh, Michael B. Jordan a nod. He may not beat. Leonardo, it's Leonardo's job this time to get an Oscar. I love that's my man. I, he deserves an Oscar. Yeah, he deserves an Oscar. But so Leonardo could get the Oscar, but give a nod to the nigga. Like he deserves, like Michael B. Jordan deserves a nod. That's crazy you know, that he didn't get a nod. But you know, it's but that's not. It's all white guys. They're picking the best. They're doing the best they could. They're not necessarily racist. What's really troublesome to me is the segregation in Hollywood. That if you're a black comedian, you get off the the plane, and HBO's allowed me to shoot a whole ser- you know, pilot, probably be a series, a deaf comedy again, because Martin and Jamie and Cedric and Bernie and Chris Tucker and Steve Harvey and Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams and um, who else? Mark Curry and Bill Bellamy and Adele Gibbons and D.L. Hughley and all of them, look at the poster. All of them came in a moment. Nobody black came after that, period. You're talking about Deaf Comedy Jam. Yeah, Kevin Hart was on Deaf Comedy Jam. Yeah. Um, J.B. Smoove was on there countless times. So. They got a part every black person wanted. They pick cornballs. I don't, by the way, I like Keenan Peel. I want to say this first. I want you, to, if you start a segment, I like Keenan Peel a lot. Mm-hmm. I always diss them. I want to take it back because I feel very bad about what I've said about them. They're very funny. They're very funny. But niggas didn't choose them. Black people didn't choose them. Hmm. Black people chose Tony Robbins. Black people t- chose, you know, a hundred comedians before he chose them. And I'm not knocking them, and I think it's great, and it's okay to have accessible comedians, but all of the cool, edgy, fun things and people and cultural elements that are not included. Like, see, music, when I put Ain't No Nigga on the Nutty Professor soundtrack, everybody's like, what? Because I was black, I picked Ain't No Nigga, and I put it on there, Jay-Z, first record. I put that on the Nutty Professor soundtrack because I produced the movie. Right. But it was the record. See, records can go no matter what you think. But choosing an artist, you reaching around the core of black comedy to pick who you want to pick, it's arrogance and it's ignorance and it's a lack of sensitivity. It's not racial. And I blame black commu- the black community for not integrating. You know, sometimes you got to go next door and hang out with your neighbor instead of driving down the block. You live in Beverly Hills, you can go next door and hang out with Norman Lear instead of driving down the block and hanging out with your black writer that suits you too. You have to cho- make friends. No one's going to hire you if you're not their friend in a cultural or creative business. Pretty much. So that's something I've been okay with doing. I pitched a Holocaust show. HBO told me it was too expensive. They were right. It's a six, 13 episodes. Great show. It's so fucking good. A great book. Great idea. Really expensive. I always pitch them my ideas first because that's my job. Um, a lot of what I do is integrated to an extent that's beyond anything anybody thought of because I like to let black stars be big. I don't like them to be segregated. So if I send a guy to Sweden to solve a crime, or if I send a white guy to a black college to win back his black girlfriend, like Legally Blonde, or if I make, you know, I, might, I have lots of integrated movies and, and TV shows in development, but they're very hood, but they're very cultural, but they're also very mainstream. And I think that's kind of what Walk This Way was, but it's really what we've done throughout, I've done, is, is get black stars pop. But the problem with Hollywood is the black agent, if he's not friends with white Hollywood, Say he's the black agent and he represents Denzel. If you're not hanging out with the power brokers, then Denzel got to leave you. Hmm. And then if you're Will Smith's ma- agent and you're good and Will Smith gets hot, you should, dro- you should grow where Will grows too, that's true. But Will might get impatient waiting on you to make deals with power brokers that you didn't hang out with. I used to go when I was a child. I used to go and fucking 
uh, what was it, um, Hawaii, hang out with the chairman of the companies. Like, why is he even here? Like, he's, he's 22 years old, is there, you know, or 24 years old. He has, you know, why, I was there, I would hang out, I wouldn't be with the chairmans. They were like, nice, like, come on. I mean, I, I didn't feel out of place, but a lot of people do. Chris Rock is a person who gets along with everybody, is why Seinfeld was in his movie for free, is why Adam Sandler was in his movie for free. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, I get it. Chris was bust, it made it easy. I was bust from the hood, and maybe I was okay with it. Maybe that's why I became the relationship uh, kind of, but that's what we need to do as business people. Every artist may not be able to do that, but certainly the business people, you better make friends with whoever, and you have common interests. This is why your friendships exist. You know, I mean, if I was making a whole bunch of movies, I'd probably be over Ron Meyer's house. If I made a couple hits, I would make a couple hits and not go over Ron's house. I, he's my man anyway, right? He's a friend. Like, I could probably call him, I love his wife, Nancy. I mean, I'm friends with, I don't hang out with them regularly, but I don't hang out with a lot of Hollywood people, but I would. I know if it's my business too, I do. I get along with everyone. I think it's our job. And it may be someone thinks it's Tomming because they're the only black guy there. And that's the problem. But um, you've got to open the door if it's already open. You've got to walk in the motherfucker. So the problem I'm saying, let me get back to the problem. The problem is that there's nobody black pushing buttons nowhere. Nowhere in charge of nothing. Forget the Oscars. That's interesting because, I mean, well, the, the, pres the, president, Think about it. the president of the Academy is an African-American woman. Yeah, yeah, all right, president of the Academy, the producer of the show, right, Chris not, Rock, all that not stuff. not the like, actual the studio okay. heads. It's a lot. The conversation is who's pressing the buttons. Nobody black, period. No president, no studio is black. No president, no TV show company is black. No vice president, nobody of any significance at all so even in the agency business. Even at Netflix. Is black. Nobody. Wow. That's pretty interesting. The black agent, Charles King, was the biggest black agent. He was the black agent. And he was the black agent. I mean, without dissing him, he knew that they'd reach around him when it came to his big black clients. And he was agents of record, but the boss made the deals you know, with his big black clients. Nobody. Black in charge of nothing at no agency. There's, um, there's a woman who's Indian at CAA who has a black husband. <laughs> That's the closest? She's very powerful. <laughs> but it's really true. And I don't, you know, I just see it's an infrastructure problem. It's a, um, if you're a black promoter, why do you got black comedy night? Why, is it gotta, why if you're a black comedian, you got to go to Chocolate Sunday or More Better Monday or Terrible Tuesday or Wild Wednesday and you know there's no agents or no producers or directors in the room. My Wednesday, I make my business to drag agents and writers and producers to the room to see those black comics that they overlooked. And now I gotta make movies with them myself or TV shows with them myself. Uh, but it is true that if you're a black comedian, you don't know you're a nigga till you move to Hollywood and they tell you I see you on Chocolate Sunday. And you don't even know no black people when you're from Omaha and they said, but, you know, but wait, you see Chocolate Sunday, nigga. And that's what night you play. It's segregated and the promoter accepts this fate as his own instead of integrating his night and just making his night a night where everybody can go with just great talent. It's kind of a demeaning, it's kind of a, it's a two-way street. Like, so the black comics aren't getting to play at all the pop shows and you got a black show and now suddenly you integrate your show that where the black comics go, you cut half of them out. It's a, it's a lot of a balanced thing. Um, I believe integration is the only route. Integration destroyed the black community. The fabric, the economic fabric of the black community destroyed it. You used to be a black doctor, a black lawyer, a black pharmacist, a black everything. Now you got Rite Aid. Now you got everybody in your community. And now you have no economics. The money leaves the community immediately. But the same token, it's so bad that without integration, you have no future. So now there's only one route. You can be Tyler Perry. It's hard though. It's not hard, not impossible because the, the white space still exists and the lack of knowledge still exists, but the lack of funding and distribution really exists. Have you ever met Khloe Kardashian? Yeah, I'm a, I'm yeah. a lovely girl. Yeah, but there was a rumor that the two of you hooked up. Is it? Yeah. Fucking love, I wish I knew about that. Nah, it's not true? Nah. It was, it was supposed to be in Australia. You, 
I don't know if God is a man or a woman, but I definitely know that bitch is the devil, for sure. Why so? Why so? She destroyed lives. 